Well, I'm back in Bromyard now after my trip up to Ardfern in Scotland. I had to go directly to Wales and carry on working on my little boat because that needs to be finished for my upcoming trip um, with my lady. It's first sailing uh, uh, escapade, if you like, um, on the electric motor. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all works out. Because it's very important that we find a solution to these fiberglass boats sitting, floating on the water in need of repair. And it's not possible to continue to pour money into these things in the form of diesel engines. These old engines are expensive to work on, difficult to work on, and it's just throwing good money at bad, basically. And so there has to be a way to electrify these boats and move these boats forward into the new age that we're moving into, the electric age, if you like, of boats. And there's a lot of rich people who own these fiberglass boats and they get to a certain point, they're not interested in them anymore. These are classic boats. They were built, these particular Mac Westers were built by a gentleman, Mr. Roy, and he pioneered the work of building the first fiberglass boats. He did everything himself. He didn't subcontract anything out. Everything was built at his site. To respect and honour the work of these pioneers, it's necessary to look after what they built. And fiberglass boats, the actual shell and the mast and rigging and the main part of the construction can last for a very long time. And unlike wooden boats, which require every component replacing, it's only necessary to redo the interiors, really. And the electric technology, there, there is a mass production that can be accessed as far as electric engine technology goes. And it's possible to buy a modern brushless electric motor of 1800 watts for only 110 pounds, with including the controller that will, for, will allow it to do forward and reverse to control the speed of the motor. And there are economies of scale involved in using this kind of ordinary everyday technology that's mass produced. And so it's necessary to find an economical way to bring these boats through. And this is my work. I'm working on the solution. And at the moment I have a 22 foot boat and we're yet to see how this will be pushed by a small electric trolling motor. And from that experiment we can then move forward to say well what's an 1800 watt motor going to produce for it did i say kilowatts before it's 1800 watts 1.8 kilowatts these motors are sold for converting small electric cars and go-karts and things like that and there's a great demand for these from the younger generation wishing to experiment and build their own vehicles. It's a new movement, complete new movement. And the people who are doing this are the poor people. The rich people that are not interested in this kind of thing. What the rich people do is they go out and they buy fancy stuff that other people made. And they're just consuming and destroying the planet in the process. I am currently editing a video on this computer. This computer is 15 years old. It's necessary to use this stuff for its full lifetime, not to keep on buying new, the very latest thing, the, the very latest phone, 
It's necessary to use this stuff up fully because a lot of effort goes into its production. And really it's the same with these boats. More so because so much more effort is involved in making these things. And it's a, the, the job of the poor people, if you like, to discover these ways forward because the poor people, they are the ones who are in a position to actually need to have these ideas because otherwise how are they ever going to get on the water and mess about in boats? It's necessary that man is able to get on the water and mess about in boats. It's not just for the rich. And so as a community it's important that we find a way to pass these old fiberglass boats into the hands of the poorer classes who can actually work on these boats and help to stop them becoming ruining the environment and becoming an overhead on the local community. <clears throat> now, what I've tried to do with this Mac Wester 26 is to retrieve it from Scotland, to move it down to a place where it's economically viable to work on a boat. It's within reach of where I live. And it hasn't been possible to do that. I took everything I needed to bring this boat down, but it turns out that I was misled in the condition of the boat. It was supposed to have just require a starter motor fixing. And this is not the case at all. And the whole boat seems to have been stripped of most of what's inside it. And so things like life jackets, the normal things that you would expect to find on the boat that are floating on the water, don't seem to be in place on this boat. And so it seems to be a boat that's just been stripped and left, really. Although most of the electronics are there, it's really in a lot worse state than I was led to believe. And a state that requires that it be done in the local community of Ardfern. It cannot be moved anywhere else. If it had not got to such a bad state, it could have been moved easily somewhere else. My Last boat, the 22-footer, I moved from the Thames estuary to North Wales, as it was sitting there, you know. Everything was there, everything was in place, as it was left by the previous owner, who had been using it. And so, once a boat gets to the point where nobody's using it, people start to take stuff off it, and it's just a floating hulk, if you like, then it becomes more of a problem for the local community. And I was misled in respect to its condition. So, having spent £250 in petrol, my time to get up there and find this out, it's necessary to come to some way forward for this boat. And it's a community problem these boats need to be sorted out. And to sort them out, it's poor people are the people who do this work because the rich people aren't interested in getting their hands dirty and spending all their spare time working. They don't want to do that. They just want to buy what they do and do it and use it and consume it. And so it has to, there has to be a way for poor people to work on boats in the local community. Otherwise, this boat is just going to get stuck there. Now, for poor people to work on boats, there needs to be a place to put the boat so the people can work on it. And so, it's necessary for the community to have places of very economical places to put and work on boats. They cannot be expensive places. It has to be, well, I think it's too much what I'm having to pay in North Wales. I'm having to pay 
about 70 pounds a month to keep a boat on the site and work on it. Now, 50 would be more reasonable for somebody who's on a minimum income. And so there needs to be a place where you can put this boat for 50 pounds a, a, a month, where it can sit for maybe a year or two, and that money can be paid each month. And that covers just the fact that it's sitting there, somebody's working on it. This could be a free facility, as long as the boats are being worked on. This could be provided by the local council. It just needs a place where the boat can be brought in, onto the land, close to the water and worked on. For me to do this work, I would need to be living in Ardfern. I'm quite happy to come to Ardfern and live in Ardfern and work on this boat on some place where I can pay 50 pounds a month and then I can take my time over it and make it good, make it perfect if you like and with an electric engine and continue the experiment of is it possible for a 26 footer to be powered by electricity at no reasonable cost Instead of this boat ending up, I don't know what will happen to this boat. It will just get washed up on the shore one day. It will be the city council's problem. But there's nothing I can do about it, personally, except I'm helped by the local people. Because the local people, it's their responsibility. They have these boats, many of them getting older, deteriorating. It needs to be a system whereby these fall into the hands of people who are living locally, who are working on them continually as they fall into disrepair. Taking out the diesel engines and putting in electric engines. It's necessary to do this. There's, there's no future in diesel engines. All these people putting diesel engines in boats now, they're criminals. You cannot do this. The diesel engine is finished, we know this. Our environment cannot take this kind of stress. And so, this is really my letter to the local community at Ardfern. This is the first, the start, if you like, of a new way forward. You need to find a way to sort this boat out. I'm prepared to come up there and live in your community and sort this boat out. Or you can find somebody locally who can do it. I've tried to find somebody locally and the person hasn't contacted me back. And so I've given it enough time now. Some weeks have gone by and so this is my next step, if you like, to say to put this problem into the hands of the Ardfern community. My telephone number I'm putting on the screen now that anybody who wants to move forward on this issue can call me and we can take it from there. Either to help get this boat into the hands of somebody who can look after it, who can spend their time, full-time job of renovating this boat. Or I will do it. I will come up to Ardfern in my little 22-footer. There needs to be a, a, a place that I can float it. And then I need somewhere to stay while I'm there. And then I'll work on this boat. And I need social housing, the same as I'm here. This is social housing. And so that I can continue my work where the problem is. That's all.